So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmed wa salli ala Rasul al-Kareem. So, we have Joe Biden as the new president. But this new presidency comes at a very, very critical time. And this is the time, my dear brothers and sisters, for you to see the work of Allah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran talks about the rise and fall of nations. And the rise and fall of nations because of their character. We have seen before our eyes, I'm almost 50 years old, we have seen before our eyes the fall of the American empire in the last 20 years. The America that I grew up in, in, it was a very different, a very, very different America than the America we have today. America is so divided. And I want to talk about this divide that is in America very, very quickly. Internally, Trump represented the male. Biden represented the reaction of the females for what Trump represented of the male. The feminists were all with Biden because, you know, they had the women's protests in Washington, D.C., the largest female protest uh, ever in the history of the United States. And then you have the minorities on one side, the blacks and the Hispanic there with the Joe Biden and all the whites are on the other side. You know, you have the Black Lives Matter on the side of Joe Biden and those that are with the cops on the side of Trump. America is divided on these very, very on crucial issues. America was divided. And here came along this man who gave it away, his real agenda, when he said, Inshallah, in that debate with President Trump. And it was at that moment that I knew and I had said that most likely, most likely, Joe Biden is now going to win. And this is happening because there is a difference of opinions that are taking place between Pentagon and Jews of America and Israel, where they are now agreed, they have agreed on so many things and they've taken so many steps forward that now the pull and push between Pentagon and its policies and Israel and its policies. And so now this was the this was the final nail to align everything. Okay, I want you to be, I want first, let's see what I said a few weeks ago, a month ago, when the debates were happening before the president, about like one month before the, <clears throat> I think exactly one month before the day of election. Uh, so let us uh, take a look at this. Okay. Some of my candidates were running with me for the nomination, I hope they misspoke or they t or it, they have been taken out of context. This is about He's Biden's support for Israel. Okay, so now, uh, you know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? Uh, that the Dajjal will come on a donkey and Biden is running with the donkey. And of course, I'm not saying that Biden is the donkey. I'm just saying, I'm just putting two things together. Okay, so that everybody's clear on what I'm saying. Biden said, inshallah, in order to prove himself, in order to cross a certain level of evil. He said, inshallah, to cross a certain level of evil, like the king did who wanted to kill the boy. Okay, he had to take the name of Allah. Like Ya'juj and Ma'juj have to do in order to cross the wall, like they already did to cross the wall. So they have to take, they have to invoke the name of Allah. There's a certain evil that you have to. And so the future in America is bleak for its own citizens, is bleak for the whole world. And there's only one foreign policy, help Jerusalem, help Israel. Everything else is secondary to that. Nothing is more important than Okay, so they have come to a point of where they have to invoke, inshallah, to cross a certain limit. And this was one of the messages, perhaps, in Surah Al-Qahf, when they asked the questions. Allah knew why they were asking certain questions. And we know that they always ask questions of benefit to them. Like they said to Prophet Muhammad, Oh, why don't you here give us a river? Okay, one of the things that they say, why don't you 
break a river for us so that we can, you know, have water. This is what they always will ask for a miracle that will be of their benefit. And so why don't, you know, you cure the blind. That's great benefit. Okay. You know, and then they still won't believe. But now these questions that they were asking about Zulqarnain and about the political power and ruh, you know, political power like Zulqarnain and the ruh, and in the middle is Ashab al -Kahab. And Ashab al -Kahab is a great aspect of this. Because it's about moving space and time, the relativeness of space and time. It's like when the man said, I will bring the throne before you blink an eye. It is the power to move space and time. It is the power to make space and time relative. And so they wanted to know about Ashab al-Kahab. And they wanted to know about Zulqarnain because of the political power. And they wanted to know about the ruh so that they can become immortal. You see, and then Allah says, these things can't happen until my name is invoked. And you're do even if you're doing this for good or evil, it cannot happen without invoking the name of Allah. Certain things just can't happen. Either you are in the as a as a you have to become either a representative of Allah, as Dr. Umar Zaid says, you know, under the under the hierarchy, right, coming into harmony with the grace of God, right? Either you do that or you have to let God become a witness against you. And there's a certain level of evil that the world has now reached. So anyway, this is what I said back then. But now let me show you what Joe Biden, uh, what has happened. Okay, so let me work my way backward. If there was no Israel, he said, we would invent one. If there was no Israel, we would invent one. He said when he was relatively still young, he believed in this. If we look at the Middle East, I think it's about time we stop those of us who support, as most of us do, Israel in this body, for apologizing for our support for Israel. There's no apology to be made. None. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. So he's saying, if there was no Israel, we would have to make an Israel. This is how much we love and need Israel. Okay? So, uh, what is the point of, of this? Okay? I want to remind you about what... You see, Biden represents the Obama policy. And many Muslims still think that Obama was great for Muslims. But you forget to remember that Obama created ISIS, helped create ISIS. Obama is the one that started... The wars and the situation that is currently there in Syria, that was started by Obama. Obama is the one that gave weapons to the ISIS people that picked up the American military weapons from Mosul. Obama is the person that was droning Muslims in Afghanistan and Iraq every single day. Obama is a person who wants war. Obama is the person who wants, who wanted to bring who wanted to compromise with, uh, with uh, make a deal with Iran so Iran couldn't have any nuclear weapons. They both agree Iran needs to be brought down, just the two sides just don't agree on the method and the strategy and the difference of opinion between what Israel wants. Israel wants war. And so while Trump had a policy of pulling out, pull people out of Iraq, pull out people out of Afghanistan, pull, pull the entire army out of uh, Germany, so on and so forth. While Obama had that type of policy, Joe Biden is the type of person that has the policy that's going to be pro-war. Whether, it, let me uh, share with you, what are the, some of the other things that uh, that uh, that uh, happened during the Obama administration? Okay, you have the covert drones, uh, drone wars that killed dozens of Muslims in Pakistan and Afghanistan. You had the killing of an American citizen, Anwar Awlaqi. Okay, you had, of course, the killing of Osama bin Laden is there, but this is a person who didn't care about killing even American Muslim citizens. Okay, that as long as you give the label terrorism, there is no reason to give due process to them. There's no reason to bring them to, right? And do you know why 
this whole thing happened within in, in Syria. Okay, let me actually show you, and then I'm going to end uh, with a, a few last notes about this. Okay, it's like the Syria oil Kennedy. Okay, <clears throat> this is the pipeline. The whole war with Syria happened because they wanted to build a pipeline from Syria, okay, from Syria over here, okay, and they wanted to build a pipeline from Syria going into Europe, okay, and Russia wasn't going to have that, okay, that was challenging Russia a little bit too much, that's why Russia is there, and they, they wanted dominance over this region, meaning the U.S. and its allies and, and Saudi Arabia, including, including Qatar, that was building the, the pipe oil, and so even Robert F. Kennedy writes an article about this issue, Right, and I, I had I gave a Juma khutbah when this was first happening. I gave a Juma khutbah at this about this very issue. I gave a Juma khutbah about it, and there were non-Muslims listening to it. And when they heard it, they took you know one of them said to me, "Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is this is this whole war, this whole situation that was created in Syria, right? This whole situation was because under the Obama administration, under the Biden Obama administration, they didn't care two cents, you know. And so while Trump was bad for Muslims, he was still better for Islam. Okay, in a sense that he didn't kill Muslims. He didn't he didn't he didn't I mean they're both bad for Islam, don't get me wrong. But Biden and Obama did far worse to Islam than Trump even didn't even come close to because the most Trump did is say things. He was like a dog that didn't bite. But Obama and Biden, they are like the uh, the wolf in 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 the in the sheep of a uh, in the covering of a sheep that are going to bite and bite and bite and you're going to still think because you're delusional you're going to think that they're still sheep and then on top of that you're with a party that is now at its peak in terms of feminism at its peak in terms of the um, at its peak in terms of uh, you know this whole gender issue of homosexuality and, and, and many, many different, you know, the whole godlessness, at least the Quran teaches us to be with the Ahlul Kitab compared to the people that don't even believe in God. The party of the donkey is the party that's atheists. And so, yes, the Republican Party doesn't like Muslims, but that is the, our problem. You know, it's like one sheikh said, uh, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, one sheikh said that when they were drawing cartoons in France, when they were drawing cartoons, they were not drawing cartoons of Prophet Muhammad. They were drawing cartoons of the Ummah because that's the representation that they have in their mind of the Ummah. That's what the Ummah represents in their mind. So we have to do the better job. But over here, I want it to be very, very clear okay, that Obama is not something because what my fear is and why I'm bringing this up is that my fear is that, you know, it's playing good cop, bad cop. Right, but they have the same objective, and so when the good cop comes, you think he's actually good, and when the good cop comes, you think he's actually good. And then what happens? You think you can sleep for the next four years. You think you can just sleep for the next eight years, and then by the time you wake up with the next bad cop, things are far worse than they even began, and so things will most likely get worse. And Biden will use this whole scenario of vaccines and corona to just really bring America down and then to really bring Jerusalem up. This is a man who believed we needed to create Israel if it didn't exist for the benefit of America, supposedly. Okay, remember, his, his you know how, uh, how uh, Trump's daughter is married to a Jew? His son is married to a Jewish, uh, his, he, he, his, his, his son is married to a Jewish uh, lady. And then the real person behind the scenes, who I haven't even gotten to talk about, is the lady, Kamala, uh, Kamala, uh, Kamala, or whoever that vice president lady is. She is something interesting, which I will talk about at another time. And, you know, Biden is an old man. She's the one that's going to be ruling America.